Good morning, everybody. So today we're going to start putting all of our page kits together now that we have them made. And I decided to start with this 4th of July picture of my grandson at the parade. And the only reason I picked it is because he's adorable. And is there any better reason than a cute kid to make a layout? So that's where I decided to go. I did find out that the year that these were taken was in 2015. So I'm going to grab the one and the five. And then the others will just go back in my stash. And then we're just going to go ahead and get going. Um, I really don't have any plan. Um, been kind of thinking about it. I kind of want to do more like a flag. So with the stripes being, you know, I don't know if I want to use this as the backyard, but I kind of want to make it look like a flag. So maybe I could do that. I could even go and mat the pictures in the blue up above and maybe, you know, tear some of the floral to add to it. That's kind of a, I just thought of that. That's kind of a cool idea and just kind of build it like the American flag. All right, we're going to go with that. It just came off the spur of my head. So anyway, I'm going to um, go ahead and put you on fast forward and we will go ahead and get this put together. Again, I want to thank everybody for the great feedback. I know Moira has said in her videos that she is struggling with putting page kits together. And again, the whole purpose is to show you that none of us are perfect with how we our brains work. We're not the same. So how I put a kit together is going to be different than how Moira does and how you do it. We're just trying to give you different options and different views so that you can take it the way that your brain works and jump from there and see how you can go into your stash, pull out some things and make some layouts within a, a week's time. Again, I'm kind of going towards the thinking of if I wasn't at home, what I would bring. Um, in, in my kits, I don't have alphas in here or some of the things that I would have taken with me to a crop. So there's where I'm kind of cutting it short. Um, and I'm only doing five. Moira tends to think more of, you know, um, as a whole. And so she's just going and doing a little bit of jumping off. The idea with page kits though, and not to lecture, keep going on, is because many of us have huge rooms full of wonderful supplies. And when you walk into the room, sometimes it seems overwhelming and you don't know where to begin. And so this is just telling you how you can go and take that large room with supplies and minimize it down to a small enough stash that you can then go and make some pages without having to um, get frustrated with the whole process. Because this is all supposed to be fun. And that, and that's why we buy the stuff. It's all pretty. We want to get it on the layouts. We enjoy the pictures of our family. And when we're all done, it's great going back into the books and looking at what we've seen. So that's kind of the premise of it all. Um, and again, through the next few months, I will show you what I do. Again, I have probably a good over a hundred paper pads. I'm obsessed with paper pads. Sometimes I think I don't have enough which I have to check myself, and that's why I was on a year-long spending freeze. But sometimes I'll just go, okay, I'm going to start with a paper pad. I close my eyes, and I just randomly pick out a pad of paper. I find coordinating paper, and I build and find the pictures from there. That's what I did this round. Um, I might start with the pictures as inspiration and look for the papers that go with the pictures. It really depends on, as Janet with RTS would say, my mood and my feel. So we're just trying to show you other ways to look at your stash and get inspired to use your stuff. So off my soapbox, this is all about playing and having fun. So please um, look at your room, pick an, a direction that you want to go, whether it be with a picture, with a piece of paper, with a group of, you know, um, kits, whatever it is. Hopefully what Moira and I show you and all the other scrappy YouTubers that um, have page kit um, YouTube videos, 
hopefully that gives you a little bit of inspiration just to not watch the videos, but to go into your stash, grab some paper out, and put something together. So we're going to go ahead now and go on fast forward, and we will be back to go ahead and see what we can make with these pictures and these papers that we picked out. Be right back. Okay, since I have come up with my jumping point, I decided to go ahead and go with the kind of the flag feel, if you want to say that. So the first thing I did was map my photos on the white cardstock. I just wanted them to pop off the page a little bit, and since I had thrown that white cardstock in my kit, I decided to go with it. So I'm just putting a very thin border of that down. Now I'm just going to go and kind of lay the pictures out how I want them in the corner onto the blue paper and I'm going to glue those down and trim up the mat a little bit. Now I do cut it bigger than I want so you'll see me come back a couple times and just trim a little bit more off of it. Um, I just want a little bit of the blue showing through because I want, I really want it to be, a, be like the field of blue like you'd see on the flag so I don't want it to be even though they're four by six photos, I don't want that mat in the corner to overtake the whole page. I still want you to get the, the mood and the feel of um, it being the American flag, with the exception of this flag is going to have flowers, because, you know, who doesn't love flowers? So I'm taking that floral piece of paper, and I'm just going and um, ripping off a little bit. I'm going to put that at the top. That's just going to give me a little bit more of a pop of color on here with a little bit of golds and things that are in that um, paper. And then, like I had planned, I'm just going to stick that in the corner. Now, I had the twine sitting out, and I didn't pull out any tags to put on um, onto uh, the twine onto. So I always forget to do this, but I decided I was going to wrap the... Um, the photo mat with the red twine and just tie one of my sad bows. I am, There's some people in life that are really good bow tires people. I am not one of them. So I can do enough to be dangerous, <laughs> but that's about it. So I did go and make my bow and now I'm just going to go and rip off another piece and put that at the bottom so it kind of frames my flag. So again, it's it's kind of an abstract kind of a look. Unless you were really thinking about it, you may not know that this, my intent was for it to kind of look like the American flag. In my eyes, it does. And that's all that matters because it's going into my book. So I decided I wanted the I Love the USA um, card at the bottom. And so I'm going to stick that down there and just kind of start building my clusters off of that. And then I have the 15 up above. I'm going to take the um, cut apart um, journaling tag from Nicole Jones. I cut that in half and want to use top part at the top and part at the bottom just to build my clusters on. I grabbed this doodlebug um, star and then I took the tab that has the family on one side and then it had the white polka dots on the other. And I'm going to put one above the pictures and one above the I Love the USA. I kind of thought about putting it down with the journaling tab, but I didn't like how that looked. I grabbed the You Capture My Heart um, phrase, stuck that up with the 15 along with one of Nicole's sketchy cam uh, cameras. I thought about the together, but since it's only Dylan and not everybody else, I decided I wanted to just um, not use that at this time. And I'm, again, just kind of pulling in hearts. I pulled in um, some of the flags. And um, I didn't realize the flag that I pulled in matches the flag on his shirt. So that was kind of a happy coincidence with it being the one star. So I, I really wanted to get that on the layout. And now I'm just going to go ahead and glue everything down. And if you hear the motor or the snowmobile in the background, I do apologize. My neighbor decided to get out his snowmobile and start revving it up outside my bedroom window. So, happy winter. <laughs> Hopefully he's having fun. It's like this morning was like negative four. So my I'm not going to be outside at all. <laughs> um, I decided to take these red... Um, 
photo corners and put them in the corner of the photos and then on the top there and just so it's another little pop of red coming off of that and the last thing I'm going to do is put down some of the sequins that um that I have from that um, Spiegel Mom Scrap sequence mix. Now, when I'm putting those down, um, I did kind of sprinkle them around here and there. Um, oh, and I did put the puffy hearts on as well. I'm doing that right now. Um, the camera's going to cut off. Um, and I was like pretty much done after the sequence. So it's going to cut off abruptly, and I do apologize for that. Again, it was my storage and my phone. I need a new phone. But um, in the close-ups, you'll see the finish, it, and you didn't miss much. It was just me gluing them down. I was pretty much all done at that point. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by today and checking out my process video. I will be up tomorrow with the second process video in this series, and we'll see where this takes us. And hopefully you guys are finding some inspiration, and you're going to go into your stash as well and pull out some pretty lovely stuff. Now make sure that you check out Moira's channel. The link will be in the description box below and show her some love as well and see what wonderful creations she comes up with. Have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.